ladies and gentlemen, Mystic Mind topped, and you know what that means, we had to upgrade our fucking arsenal. We are no longer just an ultra ball. We are a banana wielder. This is one sexy son of a bitch. This is my face after I top with Mystic Mind. This will be your face when you top with Mystic Mind. Second place at a nationals in Europe. You Europeans know how to make good shit. And he agrees. We are adding this to our arsenal. He is ultra banana. Let's dive into today's video. Try to relax your anus, your shoulders. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? It's your boy Avery, and lo and behold, Mystic Mine came in second place at nationals now obviously it's not our north american nationals it came in second place at like a european nationals or something like that but either way mystic mind came in second place at a huge ass event this isn't just a locals this isn't a regional ycs no no no. this is a european nationals event so destroy that like button so that we can move up the ladder to 800 and eventually 1000 subs i really do appreciate all of the support and even more because we've got Mystic Mind topping, and God, this just makes me giddy. And really, it's also interesting to see, because keep in mind that we still have the Brave Engine at full power. This deck auto-loses to fucking Dracoback. Like, it just gets shit on by that card. But this duelist said, hold my beer and hold my cancerous deck <laughs> while we main deck three Cosmic Cyclone and side deck two copies of Typhoon and three copies of Mystical Space Typhoon. So let's go ahead and dive into the deck. So we've got three copies of D-Shifter, two copies of Planet of Pathfinder, and instead of two copies of Silent Wobby, we're playing three copies. And what's interesting about this is that this is actually really close to my dad's build. For those of you who haven't kept up with the channel, uh, you may not know that my dad and I have been playing New Yoke together since 2008 and even earlier than that before we started going to local OTS stores and things like that. He's always played Burn and Stall, Final Countdown, shit like that. And so in his Mystic Mind Burn build, he was playing two Pathfinder and two Wobby, and he's opted to not use Shifter. And what's interesting is that, for one thing, we're playing three Wobby, which it really just comes down to player preference on how often you want to see this card. Uh, some opt for two, some opt for three. Um, and D Shifter is interesting because it's really dead if you don't hit it on that first turn, especially if you're going second. However, if you do hit it, and honestly, if you're going first or second, then you lock the opponent out of the grave, and that can really hurt them, especially if they're playing the Brave Engine, because if you hit that Draco back with like an MST while Shifter's active, then it's gonna get banished. Same goes for Typhoon. The Cosmic Cyclone is just extra insurance on that. And the Brave Engine is your toughest matchup. I mean, yeah, DPE kind of hurts if you have a smart player that knows how to play against Mystic Mind, um, but it's usually, depending on the game state, pretty easy to play around. Um, for the spells, we're playing only two copies of Cauldron. You know, I used to say if you're not playing three of this card, I don't know what you're doing. But a lot of builds now are either playing one, two, or even three. Um, and it's interesting because, you know, some builds that aren't playing three Cauldron opt for like a copy of Final Countdown just to have like that extra win insurance policy. Or if they're like main decking Curse Seal of the Forbidden Spell, then they have the Final Countdown as a discard target for Curse Seal. But this, this guy opted for two Cauldron, so very interesting on that. We're playing three copies of Cosmic Cyclone. You have to play this because you've got to hit the fucking Draco back. If you don't hit the Draco back or the Faithful Venture, preferably the Draco back in the Brave Engine, you're going to lose the game. Uh, you, you also don't really care about losing a 1,000 life points because even if you get some asshole who's going to try and stall you out in time, which you should always call a fucking judge on, especially if you're playing this deck, uh, you can just use Cauldron to regain your life points back and then you have higher life points and then your opponent's trying to stall you out and then it's like, hey, dickhead, I have higher life than you. And then we're playing a three Dark Ruler No More. This is pretty standard for the deck. You pretty much have to play it at this point because if you lose the die roll and don't go first and you're not playing Dark Ruler, you pretty much just lose the game because Baroness to Fleur is going to be an, a negate right out of the gate. Chang Ying, if you have to go the Planet Pathfinder route, is going to negate that. I mean, you just, this card has to be something that you play because the opponent has to out it with a back row card and if they don't have any back row then they're going to lose the game also i want to mention too now that i think about it with sword soul cosmic is also really good at, at hitting blackout which most sword soul builds are playing one maybe two of so by hitting those blackouts before they can activate just ensures that you're going to win that matchup and then we're also playing 
Three copies of Demise of the Land, that's standard. Three Field Barrier, standard. Only one copy of Goddess Gold. Some builds play one, two, or three. Just depends on how often you want to see this card. Really, the extra copies only come in handy for ditching off of Curse Seal. Once you have the first one set up, you're pretty much like just set to go. You start controlling what the opponent draws. It's another lockout card. And then, of course, three copies of Mystic Mind. You're not playing three. I don't know what you're doing. One copy of Terraforming. And then three Duality and three Extrav. So this guy is not playing uh prosperity at all which is really surprising now this could have been because he couldn't afford it or he just opted not to because he wanted to just banish six off of extrav and i have seen some builds where they'll only play like one prosperity or they just won't play prosperity at all because they would rather just draw two off of extrav i personally feel that prosperity is just a strictly better version of duality yeah you can't do extrav into duality but <sighs> I, I don't know, man. I just feel that Prosperity is just so much better. Having that option of one of six, especially if it can get you to something like Dark Ruler or Mystic Mine instead of just a draw two. But I do feel at the end of the day, it does come down to player preference. I'm just in the camp of Prosperity. It's just so much fucking better. Um, so take that for what you will. If you have extravs, then definitely play them. If you have dualities, definitely play them. If you can't afford prosperities, go with this build. But I highly encourage you to at least test prosperities in a deck like this because you'd be surprised at how often hitting one of six, even when you're not drawing two off of like extrav, can be so fucking helpful. Then for the traps, we're playing one metaverse, three bribe, and three judgment. No curse seal in the main deck, which is really surprising that he decided to side deck it because I feel like Curse Seal is just so fucking good, especially going first. You know, the opponent tries to play Right of Aramiser on you. You play Curse Seal. You lock them out of that Right of Aramiser. You lock them out of the whole Brave Engine. So unless they're playing another card to get them a normal monster token, they're not going to have a way to use Draco back to bounce your shit. The only other way I can think of off the top of my head is if you're playing against Prank Kids and they have Pranks and they make a token, or if Sword Soul gets out Monk of the Tenny, that's a non-effect monster, then they can use the Draco back and bounce your Mystic Mind. But other than that, there's no other way that decks are making tokens right now. Um, so I'm really surprised that he opted to side deck this, but who am I to question? He came in second place. Uh, for the side deck, we're playing two copies of Amato Iwato. This card is just dumb so good uh, we're playing two copies of kaijus because kaijus are always good three copies of mst three prohibition because fuck your draco back and fuck any other card that hurts me three curse seal and two typhoon so typhoon is actually really interesting you target one face up spell or trap on the field and destroy it if your opponent controls two or more spells or traps and you control no spells or traps you can activate this card from your hand so this card is instantly live the moment that the opponent has both Faithful Venture and Draco back on the field, which if they're comboing off, they're going to have both of those cards on the board. And it's basically an imperm, but for popping spells and traps. Um, I feel like you could also just run Night Beam instead, uh, but I guess he just opted for the Typhoon because you can just play it from the hand while you control no spells or traps. Um, I guess it can also double up as like a trap card that the opponent doesn't expect, and you can just set it as another back row removal uh, where it's, something like night beam you just have to activate you can't set it and then use it later and then he's also opting to use mst instead of something like twin twisters to get that double pop i feel like he opted for this because there's not really a lot of times where you want to discard cards out of your hand with something like twin twister and it ends up being more of a hindrance to discard for the cost off the twin twister than just using something like mst and that makes sense because you know, even my dad has tried things like Heavy Storm Duster, which was actually in this build before I edited it to look like the top build. Um, you know, Heavy Storm Duster is good because, you know, you can pop two. You don't care about skipping your battle phase. You don't have a discard as a cost. It's a trap, so you can just use it whenever, although you can make that same argument for Twin Twisters. Um, but sometimes all you need is just that one pop off the MST, especially if you have D-Shifter active, then you can just MST the Draco back and not have to worry about it coming back. Um... So that is something to keep in mind. Prohibition, as I mentioned, just, you know, fuck your card. I don't want to see it. Um, this can hit just anything that is a problem. Um, and again, the curse seals. I'm really surprised that you decide to side deck this. You only have six negations in this build. Like, once you run through your three bribes and three solemns, the opponent hits a twin twister, an evenly match. They hit something, and you're you're out of luck. Like, that. that's all that you're going to have. Um, I feel like just having at least nine negates is more helpful. Granted, you can make the argument that it can stall out your back row a little bit. 
um, but something to keep in mind. The extra deck was just 15 cards of random bullshit. Uh, he's not playing in Wake of the Dragons or anything, so it can just be 15 cards of whatever the fuck you want. Um, so, yeah, take that for what you will. Guys, let me know what you think about this build, because this is really interesting. You know, this is not the Jeff Leonard special. This is not the Avril R32 Dad special. This is something definitely different. You know, I know that a lot of Mystic Mind decks are trying to figure out a way to play around the Brave Engine, and I think that this is you know, cookie cutter mystic mind with a way that has learned to figure out how to play around the brave engine and, and issues like that, because really Therions aren't much of a problem for you. You know, they make Regulus, they activate the effect in hand and special summon. You're just going to use demise the land and fuck them up. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's mystic mind and it's, it's really solid. It's, if you can work around the brave engine, this deck is good. If you can't work around the Brave Engine, this deck is liquid ass. <laughs> so guys, please, thank you for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Thank you so much for all your support. And I will see you guys in the next video.